today was one of those days where it was not difficult to find news stories. There's a lot going on. So we picked a few of, of our favorite stories, starting with this one. A Minnesota judge is ordering Google to determine and share the names of users who had searched for the name of a local fraud victim last December. Uh, the search leads to a photo, apparently, on Google that was used in a fraudulent passport that was then used to transfer $28,500 illegally from an Adena, Minnesota credit union. Google is being targeted alone uh, because this same search apparently yields no results on other search uh, engines, Bing, Yahoo. So I, I think the police and then the judge who is kind of enforcing this thinks, well, if, if it points to it on Google, the image exists there, it's what was used in this fraudulent case on the passport, then if we find the names of all the people who searched for that particular name, search that search term, then we're likely to find the person who perpetrated this. Yeah, and I think I think you can understand the desire to, to want to use technology to narrow things down and find the bad guy here. But the information includes things like names, email addresses, payment info, MAC addresses, mm -hmm. social security numbers, uh, IPs. And this is just a ton of information that we're giving over to Google, to internet service providers, to all of these companies with a level of trust, a level of trust saying that this stuff isn't going to be shared. This is private data and private information. So uh, whether or not Google complies with this is still an open question, right? right? Um, but if it does, then we got to ask, okay, what are the implications going forward? Will it set some sort of precedent? And 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 what does what does that mean for every Google user out there? And 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 could that uh, spread and set a precedent for other tech companies as well? Yeah, right. I like. I don't know if it's right to think of it like this, but I hate to say that at this point, I'm used to, I'm accustomed to seeing, the, like seeing this sort of story, yeah. but associated with something on a national security level, uh, something on a federal level. This ends up being a local municipality going for, going out for a, a large grab yeah. of data based around like a search term. It's basically a big net. It's mm -hmm. just saying everybody mm -hmm. that happened to put in the search term, Google, you have to tell us all of the people who did that search term. And then we can do with that information what we feel like we need to do based on the judge's order. And I don't know, I don't know why that's that, that feels different to me. Like, not that I think that it's okay, like outright on a federal level, but the fact that it's on a state level makes it just I don't know. I, I feel like the impact, the potential impact is much greater there. Yeah. And that's what kind of makes it feel like an overreach. And I think right. um, brings into question uh, what these, the, the consequences of this could mean for local authorities and just literally every single person in the United States. Uh, uh, we actually did reach out uh, to the Electronic Frontier Foundation yep. uh, and one of their criminal defense staff attorneys, uh, Stephanie LaCambra, uh, wrote back to us and said that this warrant is unusual in that it was approved without first establishing a thres threshold matter that the suspect perpetrator used Google to obtain the photo used in the fraudulent passport in the first place. So it really, it, it, you know, she's kind of speaking to the fact that this is broad. Mm -hmm. This might be a bit of an overreach. And, and it really does seem like uh, the, you know, the court here is just trying to get all the information it can and will make sense of it later. But that's right. not always the best approach when it comes to our private data. Absolutely. That's exactly it. Stephanie, um, she sent us a lot. So thank you, Stephanie, for, for sending this to us. Um, she kind of rounded things out by saying, even worse than this invasion of privacy are the potential criminal criminal justice consequences that would likely follow. Imagine a completely innocent party like the victim's neighbor, former high school classmate or ex-partner uh, who had the misfortune of Googling the victim's name and would then be subject to law enforcement scrutiny and subsequent prosecution based on such circumstantial evidence and that's that's like indicative of the big picture problem with something like this you never actually truly know the intent behind a search term and actually this really reminds me of something we were talking about uh i think it was just last week about how google is using ai to kind of you know to flex its muscles in determining you know what uh should be surfaced higher than others uh other things based on whether it's accurate mm -hmm. factual mm -hmm. um that sort of stuff kind of making uh making these claims about this sort of stuff you never truly know that the intent of why someone is putting in a search term are they putting in that search term because they want to find because they believe that this untruth actually happened or are they putting in the search term because they know it's untrue and they want to see the source article for it for whatever reason same same thing here you don't know why someone puts that search term in there yeah it really seems like um uh, that level 
uh, of broadness could lead to a lot of wasted time, uh, a lot of wasted resources, a lot yeah. of wasted money, um, but also just get a lot of folks involved in these sorts of situations that don't need to be there in the first place. It's almost, um, it's, it, it almost feels like a guilty until proven innocent yeah. kind of idea, which is the total, hopefully the total opposite of what our entire justice system should be based on. So sure. really you want to be brought into this stuff. If there's a reason to include you, you shouldn't be included simply because, well, maybe we'll find a reason later. Simply because you, you punched in the wrong com combination of letters on the keyboard <laughs> exactly. at the wrong time.